That concludes the time for question and responses. It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is an honor and a pleasure to rise again in the esteemed chamber to kick off my second term as MPP. I want to extend my sincerest appreciation to the residents of Mississauga Malton, volunteers, supporters, and my family for giving the opportunity to serve. Mr. Speaker, Globally, more than 1 billion people volunteer for community well-being, including members of Gujarati Senior Samaj of Mississauga, founded as an informal group in 1990 by late Shri Vishnu Prasad Rawal. Today, GSSM has over 550 members with an aim to preserve rich culture, to stay connected and serve the community. Over the years, GSM GSSM has knitted mats out of plastic bag to support areas stuck by natural disaster, organized food donation drives, Anand Mela, fun fair, yoga, tai chi, picnic, outings, and overship trip, including cruises for senior members and annual Diwali Gala. GSSM has also raised over $420,000 through a walkathon for helping Trillium Health Partners Foundation. I encourage everyone to contact Kanu Bhai, Kala Bhan, and Dilip Bhai and join this year walkathon on September 11th and Mississauga Valley Community Center. Thank you, the executive committee, all members, volunteers, sponsors, and supporters of GSSM. You are the true definition of Ontario spirit. My best wishes to GSSM. Badte raho and ani community ni seva karte raho. Keep growing and keep serving the community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I recognize the member from Muskegawak, James Bay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I would like to highlight the communities of Muskegawak, James Bay, who are celebrating their 100th anniversary this summer. These communities all have a heart of gold and display a, a huge Francophone and Northern spirit. The first one, Fouquet Strickland, a population just over 500 residents, located beside the Grand Hog River with its annual farmer's market showcasing local and made products by its residents. Shepepe Grand Hog River Farms offers a coffee shop daily special, big foods, and mar farmer market. Depana Grand Hog stores a one-stop shop as well as a to-go restaurant with a unique very, uh, twist of very, various poutine, one of the best in the region. Ensuite, la municipalité de Moonbeam, une population de près de 1,200 résidents. Let me talk about Moonbeam, a really friendly population. There is a commercial park with many camping sites available. You can eat delicious meals and pizza. Hearst City, more than 5,000 inhabitants, with many walking trails, a campsite, and also a market that is 100% green. There's also this Francophone community in my riding. Rich culture and history with lots to offer. Join me in wishing these community a happy 100th anniversary and come celebrate uh, with us. Et encore une fois, merci pour votre support. Thank you. And once again, thank you for your support. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Scarborough Aging Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would like to begin by thanking the residents of Scarborough Aging Courts, my volunteers and donors for putting their trust and support in me to represent them for another term. I am humbled and honored to serve the people of Scarborough Aging Court and Ontario for four more years. Mr. Speaker, I would like to congratulate you on your re-election as the MPP for Wellington Halton Hills and your re-election as a speaker. I would also like to congratulate all my colleagues on their election to this chamber. Mr. Speaker, finally, after two and a half years of challenging times, it was great relief and pleasure to see the resident of Scarborough Aging Court come together to celebrate Canada Day at my Canada Day community barbecue. It was heartwarming to see the residents come together and celebrate Canada's values, traditions, and diversity. I had the opportunity to chat with residents and hear their concerns and get feedback from them while enjoying some burgers and ice cream. I received a lot of positive feedback on the historic investment our government is making in healthcare in Scarborough more specifically, the new Birchmont Hospital in my riding. 
the voice of Scarborough is finally being heard. Mr. Speaker, our nation and province have made substantial progress over the past few years. Wishing you all happy belated Canada Day as our country adds another beautiful year to its age. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Niagara Centre. Speaker, we've had record-breaking heat waves this, uh, in this province this summer, yet many seniors in long-term care are stuck in their rooms without air conditioning. Despite a change in the law requiring resident rooms to be fully air conditioned by the end of June, 15 per cent of homes have missed the deadline, and the homes that have made the deadline may not be any cooler. Christine Zook is sounding the alarm about conditions her mother surely has been forced to live with this summer in long-term care in Welland. After advocating for cooler rooms, Christine was told that the home was simply in compliance. Not convinced, Shirley began temperature testing her mother's room, and readings showed it was over 28 degrees inside her room. Cooled public areas do not offer much reprieve when in COVID lockdown or when the residents cannot get themselves out of bed. The heat has been a challenge for Christine's father, Kit, when visiting Shirley. The gowns required during a COVID outbreak are plastic, disposable, and inappropriate for the heat. Shirley is fortunate to have great advocates like Christine, but that is not the case for many seniors living in long-term care. Christine points out that without legislated maximum acceptable temperatures, there is a profit incentive to not use the air conditioning to its fullest ex extent. She says, quote, it is profit over resident care and they need to be forced to continue to keep their air conditioning working at a reasonable level. I think this underscores the need for the regulations to include a maximum acceptable temperature in resident bedrooms. Speaker, I urge this government to follow through on its commitment, look seriously at its legislation and fix the loophole that is causing seniors to suffer in privately operated long-term care. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and let me begin by uh, congratulating you on your election to that seat. I know you will serve us well. Today, Mr. Speaker, I rise to highlight a few recent events in the amazing riding of Hastings, Lennox and Addington. I must begin with the devastation created on July 24th when an EF2 class tornado with speeds of up to 190 kilometers per hour touched down across the middle of the riding, and specifically with a path of about 1.4 kilometers wide across the north end of the township of Tweed. I had the opportunity to tour the, the affected areas and noted many acres of flattened forest, homes destroyed, and businesses devastated. As bad as it was, I was so impressed that during the tour that we came out with the mayor and municipal staff, but also representatives from MMAH and other professionals, and a group of volunteers from Team Rubicon to support the residents. And we heard a great number of stories where people of the community came together to support each other. Between the good fortune and the helping care of neighbors, there were no fatalities and only a very few minor injuries. I'm grateful to live and work amongst such wonderful people. I'd also like to report to this House that at its meeting of August uh, 8th, the Township of Loyalist uh, unanimously, the Council of the Township of Loyalist unanimously chose to appoint the Deputy Mayor Jim Hagedorn to his seat as the Mayor of Loyalist as it was recently vacated. So we, I know he will serve that municipality very well. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements. The Member for Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I wanted to address in my statement today the comments that the Minister of Health made yesterday. Uh, given the context that the Ontario Medical Association has reported that 22 million patient services were cancelled during the pandemic, of which 10 million were surgeries or cancer screen screening procedures, we were genuinely shocked that the government did not address this, uh, the urgency of the medical and hospital uh, crisis that's playing itself out in Ontario hospitals. Yesterday, the Ontario Health Minister said that she's not ruling out privatization as the government looks at ways to deal with this major issue. Uh, what is shocking, though, is that the Minister of Health has said that she's looking at innovative opportunities to address this health crisis. We have a recommendation. You know what is innovative? You know what is creative? 
is when you actually invest in public health care. And when you repeal Bill 124, you won't see the mass exodus of, of health care professionals from this field. Uh, so we are, we're very concerned about the direction and the language that the Minister of Health is using. We are truly committed to strengthening the public education, uh, sorry, public health care system. In fact, it has created this narrative in the healthcare field. Is this privatization by design or by ne neglect? Are you choosing to not invest in health care so that the private sector can move in? This is our concern, and we share that concern with the rest of this province. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Speaker, and let me start by, I was going to do this in my inaugural address yesterday, but since that got changed, I want to start by congratulating you, Speaker, on your election this past Monday. While I was not a member this past session, I know you perform your duties with energy and dedication, and thank you for agreeing to serve this legislature again. I also want to thank uh, those who are responsible for my being here in this chamber and, of course, those are the great residents of Bruce Gray Owen Sound. I am very grateful that for the confidence you showed in me as a new candidate in this past election. I will work hard to earn your trust every day. Uh, third, I want to thank and congratulate the Minister of Infrastructure for her broadband investment announcement yesterday. In Bruce Gray Owen Sound, we were very grateful. There are 13,870 underserved homes and businesses throughout the riding that will be now serviced better as a result of her announcement. It means a huge amount to our residents, our farmers, our businesses, and our homes and our schools. So thank you, Minister, for that investment. And finally, uh, members, I'd like you to know that it's just under six months now until Groundhog Day. And it's your opportunity to come to Wyerton and see the groundhog, Wyart and Willie, project whether there's a, uh, you know, the forecast this spring. You'll love it. And there's nothing like seeing fireworks at 7 a.m. in the morning in a winter. Look forward to seeing you all there. Member statements. Member for Don Valley West. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Speaker. It is the first time that I rise before this House, so I would like to thank you and to congratulate you. I would like to acknowledge all the people who elected me. I am dedicated to serve them and to serve all Ontarians the best I can. Concerns of Don Valley West parents, local businesses, and not, prof not for profits with regard to the implementation of the Canada wide early learning child care program, also known as CWELC or $10 a day child care. The Conservative government set a deadline of September 1st, only 21 days from now, by when child care operators must sign on to this program to reduce child care fees for parents. As of mid-July, over half of Toronto operators have not yet signed on because they do not yet have the information they need to make an informed decision, like if and when they will be reimbursed for rebates they pay to parents. The Conservative government's signing of the federal child care agreement was a good first step, but the lateness of doing so has left municipalities, parents and child care operators scrambling. I respectfully ask the Minister of Education to help them get answers. It would be a shame if families were not able to tap into this great support, especially as the throne speech talked about easing the financial burden for families in Ontario. Thank you. Hold on. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Oakville. Thank you, uh, Speaker. And it's an honour to rise this morning and give my first member statement in the 43rd Parliament. And, uh, Speaker, I want to take a moment to congratulate you on your re-election as Speaker of the House, and, and also congratulate all the members of this House. It's an honour to serve our constituents, and I, I thank my constituents for uh, electing me back here to, to serve them here in the House. Speaker, in a few weeks, the Chinese and East Asian communities in my riding of Oakville will participate in the Moon Festival celebration event. In the Chinese community, it is called the Mid-Autumn Moon Festival or Mooncake Festival, and is the second most important celebration 
in the Chinese, after Chinese New Year. I want to take this opportunity to highlight this important festival and also recognize the incredible work the organizers have had on the Oakville community. On Saturday, September 3rd, the Oakville Chinese Network Society will be hosting the Moon Festival celebration event. Finally, after two years of virtual events, this celebration will be in person at the Queen Elizabeth Community Centre. The festival is rich in history and tradition. It is a time to give thanks to the harvest of the past year while also hoping for a prosperous harvest in the new year. This important event is thanks to the Oakville Chinese Network Society, which has been an important connection in the Oakville Chinese community along with other communities by providing social, educational, and rich cultural events. Since 2012, Rena Liu has led the organization. Thank you, Rena, and all your dedicated volunteers for all you do, and I want to wish everyone a very happy Mid-Autumn Moon Festival. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Whitby. So thank you, Speaker. Nine Whitby organizations recently received approximately $680,000 from the Resilient Communities Fund so they can continue to deliver the very best possible service for hard-working families in Whitby. Nonprofit organizations like Community Care Durham are a crucial and valued part of the town of Whitby, and countless residents rely on their services and programs every day. And even facing the impacts of the COVID epidemic, these organizations, Speaker, deliver. In addition to the Community Care Durham, other organizations in my great riding of Whitby who received the funding included the Charles Best Diabetes Center, the Sunrise Youth Group, and the Participation House. Speaker, the Resilient uh, Communities Fund provides grants of up to $150,000. Speaker, it's been a priority for our government to fund successful programs like the Resilient Communities Fund, which helps nonprofits adapt and grow, ensuring that they can continue providing the best service possible and make a positive difference in the lives of hardworking Ontario families. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. That concludes our member statements for this morning. I beg to